I've got a little efficiency cubicle that I don't have to walk more than two steps to do anything that I want to do. I've got uh, a table directly behind me and on that I've got some storage, I've got face plates and tool rest things underneath. I've got some horizontal workspace here that I can do glue ups and screwing and, and have some, some place to put things down. I've got small tool storage, little tiny things that I need at my fingertips constantly so that uh, I don't have to walk around the shop looking for them. Uh, everything, the sizes of the wrenches and everything that I need is at my fingertips. Uh, my chainsaw is right there on that end. We come around on this side and I've got my grinder. Okay, what if the grinder's all the way over on the other side of the shop and you've got to walk through a door and get, get into a, turn another light on or whatever to get your grinder? You're not going to keep your tool as sharp. So having the grinder really close at hand is important. A place to, to store the tools. Uh, uh, this kind of catches the, the shavings, but uh, they're not really a bother. Um, the tools are leaning up against the, on an angle so that I can take a tool off, I can set it back down, it's not going to fall off and I don't have to thread it in a hole or have it in a bucket. I don't have the sharp edges where I could ever cut myself. If you notice here I've got uh, actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've got eight bowl gouges here. These are all exactly identical the same. They all have different handles because of over the years that I've uh, got uh, different tools involved. but. Um, when I, I can go sharpen all of these at one time, when the uh, sharp edge is up, the tool is sharp. When the sharp edge is down, I've used it and it's dull. So when they all get dull, I'll go back and sharpen them all and then I can boom, 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 I can keep working without having to stop and sharpen. Um, little tool storage for little things, uh, just having a spot for everything. Everything's got a little spot for it, drive center, whatever. Uh, my uh, knockout bar, I've got a, a little space back here for drill and sanding discs and other things that I use, uh, counterbalance weights for my torsos, you know, lead weights that I use when I'm when I'm doing multi-axis work. Uh, even my sandpaper is close at hand and I've got the, the different grits, 600, 400, 320, whatever all separated here, it's right within arm's reach and, and convenient. Uh, even have pencils close by, you're always looking for a pencil, there's never a pencil in the right place. So. Having a good uh, thick floor mat uh, down here, this is just an old rubber foam carpet uh, that uh, is a double layer so that I've got a good uh, surface to stand on all day and not get my legs and feet tired. Uh, good light is critical. I've got a, a bank of uh, I think about 13 lights in this little shop to uh, to get me good light. Um, but I also have small lights on stands and uh, up above that I can zero in on. Look at this light for instance. I think there was a fan on here at one time and uh, I just put a, a dowel in it, cut holes in it. So now I have an infinite range of movement. I can raise it up or down and uh, move the just a simple five dollar uh, light from the hardware store and I've got a perfect light uh, situation that's very mobile and doesn't get in my way. I'm going to shine this light right in my face here and I can bring the piece of wood up to it so that I can see the little scratches or little undulations, little things that I'm working on when I'm doing my finishing. Uh, I use a very bright uh, 100 watt light to evaluate my piece. Okay, everything else in the shop I have uh, up above. I've got all my electrical wiring, all my airlines up above, so that uh, I don't have stuff on the floor that I'm stumbling over. All right, and then on the other side of the lathe, I've got uh, a work area that I do all of my carving in. I've got uh, a, a carving station here with the Fordhams and the uh, uh, the grinding tools that I can use for carving. I've got my disc sander that I use for taking off big masses of wood. I've got a, a, a drill press uh, tool, a shaping tool that I use for using discs and drum sanders. I've got everything that I need, uh, a bench right uh, next to it that I can 
hold wood down on and, and uh, carve on and, and do my shaping and things. One of my favorite shaping tools is my radial arm saw. I'm going to bring the uh, radial arm saw all the way out to the end. It doesn't have a saw in it, but I've got a very coarse 50 grit drum sander here. Now I can bring my torso or, or carving uh, into this and I can use it as a shaper. I can uh, I make a, a huge, huge cloud of dust here. I can't even see my hand in front of my face. I can take so much wood off with the, the high power of the one horse motor uh, as a shaper. So I'm using the, the radial arm for a different kind of purpose. A lot of people in the turning world use the, the, the Beal buffing system or the buffing pads to finish uh, uh, cleaning up the surface of their vessels and, and I do that also. But uh, look what I've done here. I've just taken an old motor of some kind and I've cantilevered it out on the corner of my bench because when I get down in here I want to have my bowl or, or vessel be able to reach around and flow if I've got a great big bowl I need room to maneuver and get inside the bowl so this is a great way to uh, set up your your buffing system so that uh, the apparatus doesn't get in its own way. One more thing I have in the uh, in the shop space is I've put a curtain here just a shower curtain that closes off my work table from the shavings getting on it and, and going if I'm really aggressive, I can throw shavings all the way to that back wall. So this really helps uh, keep the shaving mess behind. You see, I just take a piece of uh, conduit and made a curtain rod up on the ceiling so that uh, it's in the right place.